Okay. A lot of people are asking me a uh, question of why I call teachers liberals. Well, because teachers are liberals, professors are liberals, and here's a proof of it. We have a, a bike lock attacker from the University of uh, San Francisco SU. Uh, anyways, SFSU, he's a professor there. His name is Eric, and, Eric Clanton, C-L-A-N-T-O-N. He's a professor there. And uh, he uses this uh, U uh, bike lock to assault people. Now, when you take a weapon and you assault someone, it's called aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And this professor, his career is over. A charge of assault with a deadly weapon is serious. And uh, I'm going to show you this video and. and I want you to answer something. Would you want a teacher that does this teaching your kids? Now watch the video. Oh, oh shit, he's bleeding. Yo, yo, yo. Hey, man. He's bleeding. So, in case you couldn't tell, and I'll show it again, some sneaky little Antifa fag runs up behind some girl he's using as a shield to both mask his movements and then block his getaway and he smacks some poor guy in the face with a lock a bike lock and which of course causes him to bleed here take another look <laughs> man what an absolutely cowardly cuck am i right immediately retreats with his face covered of course but lucky for us we have the weaponized autism, that is, 4chan slash poll. These are the same guys that tracked down Shia LaBeouf's flag posted in the middle of nowhere using stars, maps, airplane flight paths, you name it, they used it. Do not underestimate some freaking weaponized autists. I mean, impressive. These are the same guys we should have had looking for Osama the entire time. We would have found his ass in a week. What I'm going to show you are some of the clues these guys found on the internet that ultimately led to the perpetrator of this attack, who is now being prosecuted. And that just makes my heart jump for joy and smile. This guy is getting what's coming to him, and quite frankly, it's time to call these Antifa fuckers, you know, domestic terrorists. This is insane. But just to emphasize the point, head injuries are, are no joke. You can absolutely kill someone with a hard enough blow to the head. And look at this poor guy. His, his face is bleeding. He's got blood all over his arm. There's blood all over the ground. He's getting medical attention. All because some cowardly guy just wanted to smack him and run. Unforgivable, man. Now, let's look at some of the evidence that points to our college professor attacker. So, first up, I want to show you this picture. It's probably some of the weakest evidence, but it's evidence nonetheless. Someone found this suspect on social media, and what they're showing you here are the boots he's wearing, both hiking on his, his social media profile, and the boots of the attacker. They look quite similar, right? But here is a collection of some of my favorite evidence. Most of these pictures, if, well actually all of these pictures, were taken at and around the rally. Take note at the top right here, the backpack straps. Obviously the same. I would imagine his backpack is full of what is going to be his hoodie and mask. Right below that we have another obvious piece of evidence, which is the jeans and the special branding on the back of the jeans circled in red. Again, in bottom left they show the boots. And in the top left you'll notice his eyes. You get a good view of the man's eyes and you can see, well man, more like a fucker, cuck or something. But anyways, you can see his eyes and again they sort of match up to some of the other photos you can see here and we'll see here in a few minutes. Additionally, take a look at the center left screen here. Someone has actually transposed his facial features over top of the mask he was using to hide his face. And it kind of shows that these facial features all line up. I'm telling you, man, if you get on social media, you are no longer anonymous. And if you piss off the wrong people, they're going to find you. Okay, so those are his uh, physical evidence, I suppose. Let's look at some of his philosophy. I mean, if this guy's a Trump supporter. I mean, this wouldn't be what he'd be out doing, right? Well, don't worry about that. This is an awesome piece of evidence. It's from OK Cupid, and he just simply states, I spend a lot of time thinking about revolution. Like your typical Antifa cuck. 
Okay, so here is where Reddit starts thinking, or slash poll rather, starts thinking, okay, we have enough evidence, let's name this guy. And would you believe it? He is a college professor. Eric Clanton of SFSU. I'm sure that's a great institution. Go fuck yourselves too. I guess we should say this guy is innocent until proven guilt. guilty, right? I mean, that's just the American way. But there is some good news floating around the interwebs currently, and that is from this tweet here. Charges have been filed against Antifa professor Eric Clanton. Yeah, buddy, come get you some. Having a police force, what's the point of having the NSA, what's the point of having the FBI, if 4chan's poll, which is basically a message board there of peace, that's all they are, just a bunch of grown men who like to eat tendies and hot pockets and draw lollies all day, but sometimes they do some good there, whether they shut down Shia LaBeouf's He Will Not Divide Us, or in this case they identify an Antifa communist thug who decided to attack someone over the head with a bike U-lock, let me just play that clip really fast to get it out of the way, this is what happened. Fuck the Eagles! We gonna do bitch! We gonna do Hey, back the fuck up, bro! I'll treat you like a man! National property! That's what you want, right? You go right? You go! I'm filming you! Oh, I'm gonna hurt you! You're gonna hurt you! Cause you have a mask on! Oh, shit! Oh! Motherfucker! Oh, shit! Thank you, Shutterstock45, for actually filming that footage. They get the credit there. That was their footage that they filmed. And then this man had to have his head bandaged there. But I also want to give this out and say, just punch Antifa women in the face. And I really encourage that behavior uh, for this one simple reason. Antifa, on purpose, uses women as human shields because they know there's stigma in society to punch women. However... Antifa women have weapons on them, whether it's moldy locks having a beer bottle or a wine bottle, or it's an Antifa girl having a rag in chains with padlocks. They all have weapons underneath them, and they will try to use them against you, or one will come out from behind her and clock you over the head with the U-lock. That's just something out there that I'm going to say for all my viewers out there who are probably going to go to the Ann Coulter Berkeley uh, protest or whatever demonstration you want to call it or protect her free speech. So if you're going to that event, I encourage you to punch Antifa women in the face. Break their line. Women are meat shields for Antifa <coughs> because they're cowards. That's just something that I kind of wanted to put there. But basically, this man here on the screen wrote the wrote the story or broke the story. He has a website called the Ralph Retort. And I already know I'm going to get lambasted for this, but I'm just saying he's the first person to write about this. I'm not saying he did the research or the discovery. The people that actually found him was the 4chan uh, message board of peace known as Poll, and they used their weaponized autism and they were able to basically look at the markings of his face and his nose and they were able to come up with all kinds of diagrams there and basically scour the internet. It's a huge army of people. So with all the manpower involved in trying to debunk and, and trying to figure out who it is or who it isn't, they were successfully able to with a lot of infographics and that's basically how it works. Now, who is this man? Meet Philosophy College Professor Eric Clanton. This is his Twitter picture. He obviously deleted his Twitter account. It does not exist anymore. According to the Ralph Retort from his research and digging, he was able to figure out his name is Eric Clanton, who is a college professor of philosophy and ethics and all that good stuff that we like to be indoctrinated in. And who is he exactly, though? He has been teaching at DVC since 2015. He teaches Introduction to Philosophy with a background in teaching ethics critical thinking and comparative philosophy east-west his primary research interests are ethics and politics his work in political philosophy also centers on mass incarceration and the prison system he is currently exploring restorative justice from an anti-authorian perspective until he clocks you over the head with a bike lock if you read Eric Clanton's little About Me page here on the, on a website, basically it says on the bottom, it says, quote, I enjoy exploring the Bay Area on my bike, which would then explain why he has a bike lock. So that's just him kind of damning himself. And finally, we have someone else digging into the situation. His name is uh, Jack Posbeck, and he is pretty good at what he does. I recommend following him on Twitter. But he goes on to look on his OK Cupid profile, and he says, I spend a lot of time thinking about revolution. So it's pretty obvious here uh, that this man is definitely the one that, that has been identified as the bike lock attacker. 
There's not much else to say here. The man has been identified. It's pretty obvious that it's him. He's going to deny it. He's going to delete his profiles. He's going to delete his inter internet history. He's going to hide. He's going to be in denial. And uh, in the future, too, hopefully we can find out who more of these people are. But also, too, I just want to really reiterate this point for a lot of my viewers out there who are actually going to the Berkeley events. And I know some of you, I message some of you, I talk to you guys on Facebook. And I just really encourage you guys to please be safe. Uh, they have a lot of concealed weapons. They're not that dumb. They like to use women as human meat shields. That's why I encourage you to punch them in the face to break their line. If the cops are not going to do their job and they're not going to enforce the law, then you need to do so as a citizen. And I'm not encouraging rioting. I'm not encouraging any degenerate behavior such as destroying property. I'm just simply encouraging self-defense with the lack of police presence because it's politicized. And I'm sure the chief of police gives them commands to stand down and just watch the beatings occur. So make sure you have the numbers, make sure you can outflank them, think of a basic military strategy and you should do good, and shout out to everyone in the Wolf Pack, thanks a lot for your viewership, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot guys, I will see you again, have a nice day. You go right. I'm filming you. Oh, I'm gonna hurt you. You have a mask on. Oh, you motherfucker! Oh shit, he's bleeding. Yo, yo, yo! Hey, man, he's bleeding. Hi. This is a professor, okay? A teacher, a liberal. But I want you to read this uh, this section of his tweet. I'm interested. Let me see. Did I help uh, humanity and end all civil society? See, he wants to end all civil society. 
This is a liberal. This is what they want. This is from his own writing. This is what liberals want. They want to end the civil society. They want socialism. They want communism. Uh, com they want a com comedy, uh, communist society. The commies. That's what they want. They are against civilized uh, society. And they want all the chaos and everything to go on. But this is what the liberals want, people, to end civil society. That's your liberals. I'm not making it up. I'm showing you the proof.